All right, this video is going to look at domain of arithmetic combinations and composition. Just want to look that look at that in a little more detail. Um, so if you're trying to let me get that cursor out of the way. So if you're trying to think about how to do the domain for an arithmetic combination, it helps to remember how those functions are next to one another. And so your x value, you know, has to go through both of them. And then it's after the fact, you know, that you're going to bring them back together and either add, subtract, multiply, or divide them. And so when you're looking at the domain for the overall um, combined function, um, what you got to do is you got to think about it like this. Okay, to get the domain, of f plus minus or times g okay you need the x's in the domain of f that are also in the domain of g okay so it has to be the values of x that are in the intersection of those two okay so you need the domain let's use a capital d to stand for domain so if we need the domain of either f plus minus or times g it's going to equal the domain of f intersected with domain of g might be a, a brief way we could say that all right, now you got to watch out a little bit on divided by. Okay, so that one I, I separated out for the domain to get the domain hmm. sorry. Let me get that over here. There we go. All right. To get the domain of f divided by g, okay. Start with all x's in the domain of f that are also in the domain of g so in other words start with where we left off okay but also rule out also exclude any x's making the denominator so if I write it f divided by g, that would be making g of x equal 0. Sometimes you have additional things you have to rule out on that. We're going to work some examples, so I'm hoping that's going to then make it more clear. Okay. So you start with the, all x's that are in the domain of f together with the domain of g. Like you have to get through, you have to have x's that get all the way through the f function and also all the way through the g function. Okay. And then for adding, subtracting, multiplying, that's it. That's the domain. If you have divided by, you have to consider things that would make the denominator zero. Okay. All right. Now let's go up here and let's think about the domain for composition of functions. So if we did f of g, composition of f with g, g would be first, f would be second. x would go in to only the g function. And then the output from g, g of x, is what would go through the f function. And you would get your output there. Okay? All right. So when you're trying to get the domain for that, so to get the domain of f, composition of f with g, 
use the expression at the end So once you make it all the way through both functions, use the expression at the end. You know, consider the trouble spots you see in that expression. Right, so consider denominators and consider the part under the radical, this right here, having to be bigger than or equal to zero. Okay. Okay. But then, to get the domain of f composed with g, use the expression at the end and consider the issues. You know, do you have denominators? Do you have any radicals? Exclude what you need to there. But then... Also, exclude any x's not that don't allow you that don't allow you. to get through to get through the first function in this case g okay all right, so let me explain it again while you're looking at the picture. So you can just look at whatever it is you get at the end, look for trouble spots like denominators and radicals, rule out what you need to there, but then also check this one to see if there's any additional things you have to rule out. Because sometimes, sometimes issues get camouflaged when you do your simplifying, okay? All right. So let's go ahead then and look at a few examples. So let's, let me pull up, see, I think I have it on a PDF and I may have already snipped that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and consider this worksheet where I've got F being two X minus one G is the square root of X. First off, I'm just asking you on number one to do the domain of all of those. So the domain of F is all reals because it's linear with no trouble spots. The domain of G, that's a radical, so what's under the radical has to be bigger than or equal to zero, and that's just X. So I know the domain of G is everything from zero on up, including the zero, okay? Now I'm being asked on two, on three, and on four, I'm looking at combinations of functions, okay? So if I'm trying to do G minus F, that kind of thing, part A is asking me for the actual rule. Part B is asking me for what the domain would be, okay? So G minus F of X would just be G of X minus F of X. So that would just be, make sure you pay attention to the order there. So that would just equal the square root of X minus the two X minus one, all right? And that minus in front of that parenthesis, that would have to get distributed so I'd wind up with square root of x minus 2x plus 1. All right, now when you do the domain of g minus f, you really just need to go and look at these two right here. And you need the intersection of those two. You need x's that are going to make it through both functions. So your domain for g minus f is going to be 0 to infinity, including 0. Okay? All right, that would also be the domain for G plus F, for F plus G, for G times F. You know, the domain would just be the intersection of the domain of F and the domain of G. All right, now division is what gets a little more interesting. So when we do this, this one, F of X is on top. When we do this one, G of X is on top with f of x on the bottom, okay? So with the top one, we wind up having 2x minus 1 
over the square root of x. On the bottom one, we have the square root of x on top and 2x minus 1 on the bottom. Okay, So when you're doing the domain for the f divided by g, you have to worry about the fact that you've created now, you've taken those original functions and you've created a trouble spot because you put a function in a denominator. So you start by thinking, okay, so I know in, I know I'm restricted already to from zero to infinity. And then you think about, okay, what, what additional issue did this cause putting that in the denominator? So when I put that in the denominator, I know, I now know I can't have that equaling zero. So that means I have to modify this. Okay. And let me do the actual domain in red. So that's where I started, but then I have to change that to a parenthesis. So this would be the final answer because I have to rule out zero since the square root of x is in the denominator. Okay. All right. So for number four, I would start again with the zero to infinity. I'd be thinking about that. Then I'd think about this new issue of 2x minus 1 in the denominator. So on the previous problem, we saw x couldn't be 0. On this one, we know 2x minus 1 better not be 0. So 2x better not be 1, which means x can't be a half. So that means my domain for g over f is going to be everything from 0 to infinity except 1 half. Okay. So I'm going to go from 0 to a half, go to the other side of a half, keep going, and then just union those. That would be my answer okay, for the domain of g divided by f. So it's a little more interesting than just the regular one. Okay, All right, and then we just got two more I want to look at. All right, so if I wanted to do g composed with f of x, I would start by thinking about that being g of f of x, where the bottom one goes through the g function first. Okay, So when you're first just working that out, you have to go back and remember the f function, remember, was 2x minus 1. That's what f equals. Now you've got to do g of that. And the g function is just square root of x. right? So that means that you need to do the square root of your input. So that's the rule. And we're going to do the domain in just a second. Let's go ahead and do the rule when we flip them around, when we go through the g function first. So the g function says, take your input and find its square root. Now we need f of that. Okay. The f function says, take your input and multiply by 2 and then subtract 1. So we would have 2 times the square root of x minus 1. All right, so what, what I said you should do for the domain of these composed functions is start here and think about that. And you would look at that and you'd say to yourself, OK, it's a radical. I need what's under there to be greater than or equal to 0. So you can actually just work out this inequality. So I'm going to add 1 and divide by 2. Didn't have to flip the inequality because I was never dividing by a negative. So, and then when I get to there, that could be my answer from 1 half to infinity. But I have to kind of think about which function did I go through first. So this one goes through the f first. So also check f, just f by itself. But it's just a linear function. There's no added restrictions. So you know, the f function, anything would work on that. So, you know, the f we went through first on this, and then we went through g. So you checked what happened at the end. You also have to check the f function. But it just didn't add any restriction. So your answer would be from 1 half to infinity. Okay. And that would be the answer on that one. All right, now on the last one, you look at the rule at the end, and you see I'm looking at that rule, and I can tell looking at that that there's a trouble spot and that x would have to be bigger than 0. Okay, So first off, I'm thinking that bigger than or equal to 0, I should have said. 
But then I got to think about the fact that I went through the G function first. And were there any added restrictions? But actually the G function was the square root of X. So I've already ruled out what I need to there. So that's my domain. Okay, It'd be from zero to infinity. Okay. All right. Now, um, domain can be kind of tricky. It's interesting, requires a lot of critical thinking, and you can do it. You just have to uh, take time to try to make sense of it. All right, so I'm going to stop. And I, this video just consisted of doing the domain for arithmetic combinations.